An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. So critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we and those are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your own adult style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. honesty. Which invites you to be to the fullest. Shut the front door. I was just <coughs> tagging the post. Literally, I went to go hit the post button, and you called in, so I didn't even get to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I just called to see how you were doing and touch base and stuff. Excellent. Yeah, we haven't had an opportunity to really talk for the last few days. We've been busy, and you yep. know, lots of things have been changing and happening. And um, I was, yeah, just, no, I I was to... just at the at the thrift store. Um, ended up picking up an old laptop for twenty bucks. <clears throat> it's not able <laughs> to really do that much, but I figure it's a good starter system for Katie. Oh yeah, because what is she? She's not going to know the difference. Yeah, I mean, it's an old, archaic system, but I figure I could put down a really, you know, slim down and optimized version of Linux on it and then just configure the bare basics of what she's going to need. You know, YouTube and all the basic, you know, shit that kids get into and whatever, and and she'll be she'll be happy. That'll be her little laptop, and she'll be like, oh! I mean, right? the, you totally, totally make her day. One point make her year. One point one gigahertz in the max memory, and it, it can only go up to five twelve. I think it's got two fifty six in there right now. I got to see if the, I have a five twelve chip that'll that'll fit the original, um, you know, DRAM memory. I mostly have PC two and PC three, but the memory in there is the one before that. So I got to see what I have. But um, yeah. Yeah, well, fun. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I went to a um, physical phenomena seance last night, and I I'm still in like awe right now of what I experienced. Um, the there are less than ten mediums in the world that do physical mediumship, meaning they produce. Um, what's called direct voice, which means the spirit is able to um, use it's something called ectoplasm, which is produced from the human body that allows spirit to take a somewhat physical form here on the earth plane because they don't have a physical body. They need some way um, to connect to the physical world because as a medium or um, as a medium, you use your sixth sense mm -hmm. to detect all of that. So the physical phenomena takes that out so people who don't have that ability are still are able to experience things just as if that spirit was in human form. Um, well, the thing, it's all about vibratory frequency and all that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and that was very, um, it's not so, you know... The, it's not so much that the spirits are unable to manifest physically, it's that if you've got a room full of people you got a room full of belief systems saying no, 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 the energetics aren't allowing it. So it's not the right, right. spirit that is that is unable. It's the audience that is basically locking the door. Right. So the conditions have to be just so. The mm -hmm. energy has to be just so. Everybody's mood has to be just so. And exactly. all of that, it's, you know, it's chemistry. And so all of that chemistry gets, um, you know, whatever they do with it and gets aligned and then spirit is able to come in and do things within that energetic state and based off of the um, level of vibration, the intensity, and, um, you know, and everything that determines what is able to 
happen. Um, so no, just just, I, uh, just wait till science one day invents something similar to the Stargate on Stargate SG-1, and they end up finding out that these other planes that we think of are etheric and non-physical are just as physical as this one, and they just made a device that allows crossing through. I'm, well, <laughs> there's probably something like that for sure. You know, it's, um, you know, but as far as the experience last night, it was something that, um, I have, I've been making friends with these mediums that come through, and one of them was just like, hey, you know, since this is your first time, you know, here are the things that you want to look for. You want to test, um, you know, <coughs> test the spirits that come through. You know, you need to make sure that your experience is legit because with, on, with you know, with around, only around 10 people in the entire world who do this, people are so quick to just accept it as truth and not investigate it at all. You know, they want so much to believe in it that they don't um, do their due diligence, right? Yeah. So, um, and it's totally okay to do it because spirit wants you to test them. Yeah. Because that's how you get, you know, that's how you create more, you know, a change in belief systems on this side. So even though I knew a lot more, it was it was for a lot of the people in the room too. And I sat and I meditated before I went. And I was told in my meditation by my guides that I would be doing integrity checks, and they would tell me what to do. And I said, okay. I think you hit, that, you hit the nail on the head with your choice of words when you said they want to believe. Because if they believed, they wouldn't need one of those ten people in the world. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, um, hey, same with you know, us. That's the reason we aren't experiencing that directly. We are, we're not fully aligned with that, which is neither good nor bad. You know, it's just... It just is, right, yeah. Grass is green, rocks are hard, you know, it's just one of those things. <laughs> right, and, it, well, exactly, and, you know, it's, um, the, I personally feel like I had a totally different experience than everybody else, because, like I said, you know, I, um, you, hold on, Isaac, you need to put that down, you cannot touch the disc, those are not toys, and you will break it. One, two, thank you. Those, that's not toy breaker. He's playing with it. <laughs> like, the disc, I'm like, ah, uh, but, um... You know, everybody Wait, a, there... A DVD or a CD or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah, kids will scratch and break. They, they just they don't realize yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, um, but, so, you know, I'm, I, was, I was one of the few who was looking for validity, not Blind entertainment yeah. or an experience. You know, I knew that it was going to be... I bequeathed them. I knew that it was going to be an experience and something like I'd never experienced before. And I, want, I made sure that I cleared out any sort of expectation that I had, which is also very yeah. important if, um, if to not have any expectations when you work with spirit because having those expectations actually prevents things from happening. Because I, 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 like to, I like to think of it as... Ex, ex, <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. Expect anything and everything, especially that which the mind cannot perceive, everything outside of your imagination, anything and everything that your mind could not conceive of in advance. Because right. If you look at it that way, then you're open to whatever. But if you've exactly. got these pre existing parameters, then you've locked the door. Oh, it has to look like this, it has to be that, it ain't that, it Exactly, exactly. And they were even talking because we had a, like a briefing before we went in the room because there's certain things that need to be done. And they were talking about the worst seance they ever had was to, was a seance full of professional medium. Because <laughs> yeah, isn't that isn't that insane? Yeah, I'm like well, it's because each medium has their own modality and way of doing it, and the individual belief systems that work for them individually conflict with each other collectively. Exactly, and then they're there to judge David, the you know the medium and and what he's doing, and like you know they're not there with true intense you know, with true um, highest alignment. They're not there to learn. They're there to expose. It's like, and I think it's like getting a bunch of arrogant truthers in the same room with each other to talk about 9-11. Exactly, exactly. So, exactly. So, um, but, so we're sitting there in this briefing, and, you know, I went with my mom, but for some reason I went and sat over by another woman instead of my mom, and, um... And then, you know, they're, we're talking and stuff, and then they're like, okay, well, we're going to take a break here in a minute. Everybody can go use the bathroom or whatever. And um, he didn't actually give a formal break, but everybody got up anyway. And I just kind of waited because I was waiting for him to, like, whatever. And then um, 
I like uh, I felt some like a, a couple of hands of my butt and I just got shoved up out of my chair and uh, uh, and I heard go ask uh, go ask to be a checker and we said oh okay so I go walk up to the front and mind you this was supposed to be a very busy you know a time where everybody's getting up going to the bathroom they're doing whatever and when I walk up to the front I turn everybody is seated <laughs> and everybody's waiting for it to resume and I'm like uh, and I hear nope just stay there well, it's okay. And I'm waiting because the medium is talking with his circle leader, mm-hmm. the guy who's running the music and everything, and the one who's in control of it. Because when the medium is in a full trance like that, he can't. He's not aware of what's going on. He's somewhere yeah. else. Obviously. And um, right. So, um, so I'm waiting for them to, you know, finish their conversation. And David, the medium, looks at me, and he says, "Oh, I think this young lady has questions. You know, wants to speak or whatever." And I said, "Hi." I said, "You know, I hope that I'm not." you know, being intruding, but I would really love to be one of the checkers. And he, he looked at me and he said, good, because we already picked you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I talked to him afterwards and, and by, he told me. And by we, he meant him and his guides. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, um, he picked you. Yeah, and it was, it was great because they, that's what they were talking about when I walked up and he looked up and looked at me and then said something. And that's when he told his circle leader that he was picking me, and then he, like, you know, and then he brought his attention to me so that he could, you know, I could ask whatever it was I was going to ask. And, um, you know, and so I got to, uh, I got to wand him with his um, metal detector. He wanded me first, and, um, and I hid an ankle bracelet under my leggings. Uh-huh. Just, um, you know, I'm doing all of this. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm doing all this stuff. And the metal detector, sure enough, it picks up on the metal around my, um, get out of here, you're not allowed to be in here. Um, sure enough, it picks up on my, on the metal around my ankle, it picks up on the metal, um, in the back of my bra, and, um, you know, and nothing else. And, uh, so you, you know, I wanted... So the wand is to verify that the medium isn't, isn't up to something sneaky, that he's not rigged... Exactly. He's not rigged with devices or anybody whispering in his ear or... Exactly, exactly. So I got to check all of that, and we were... Where the seance was was in a room at the church that I'm very familiar with. So I know where everything is. I know when things would be out of place. You know, I, I got to check all of the chairs. I got to check the cabinet, which I knew... Um, the, do you know what a seance cabinet is? Um, not offhand. Okay, so it's really, really simple. It's basically a box created with PVC pipe and black curtain. And, um, and the medium sits within it, and the curtain is shut because the ectoplasm builds up in there, the energy builds up in there, and allows um, the manifestations to happen a lot. Oh, yeah. Here? Cryon, Cryon had, uh, had mentioned that before. He, yes. was, he was saying that in the, new, in the uh, new energies, you don't really need that so much, but um, people have these expectations about how things are supposed to be done, and that if you don't do it in a certain way, all these mediums go, well, that can't be real, because if it was, it would have been done this way, and it would have been done that way. And, and you know, other psychics and mediums and stuff are, are cry on biggest curve, not even so much, you know, regular skeptics or as regular audience people, but other mediums and such. Like, oh, well, he's not doing it in this way, so that must mean it's not real. Um, yeah, well, and I, and I laugh because... They, you know, everybody's like, oh, you know, materialization has to be done in the pitch black. You know, if you do it in the light, it, you know, it dissipates the ectoplasm. And my response to that every single time is, well, what about Jesus? Uh, when he, quote, unquote, rose from the dead, all that was was a full physical manifestation. That's it. And it was in broad daylight. Yeah. So, um, so, and so you, everything. You said to him, what about you? What? You were saying you said to him, what about you? No, no, no. What if, um, when, no, no, when there's, you were talking about expectations of mediums, and one of the expectations that is, um, that is in place right now is that this materialization, spirit being able to materialize in a visible form with your naked eye, can only be done in the dark or in the low, uh, low red lighting. Which is and, a pile of shit. It's a belief system. Right. Well, that's, well, that's, well, exactly. Because my response to that, anytime anybody wants to tell me that that's not possible, I say, well, what about Jesus? He fully manifested in physical form three days after he died to show us that there was life after death. 
Mm-hmm. You know, that's all that was. It was a full physical manifestation in broad daylight. Yeah. And even if that didn't happen, if there are infinite possibilities, <laughs> yeah, anything it can happen, anything is possible. It's all, you know, it's just our belief system. And it's just, it's so, it drives me so freaking nuts that these people are so ignorant. I mean, last night we got to ask questions. You know, people um, think that belief systems are what allow things to happen when it's quite the opposite. Belief it systems stops it. are what narrow and filter. Exactly, because if we didn't have any belief systems, then everything is possible. Exactly, exactly. You know, I mean, you can see that in animals who, you know, who won't go past a certain thing just because they believe that they can't. They've been taught that they can't do that, so they won't. You know, there's a video of a there's a video of a lab where there's a screen door that the screen is missing out of it entirely, and the man is stepping through it, but the dog won't go out the door of it. And no matter what the man does, no matter if he gives, you well, know, just like there's this there there are these pictures that have been taken of of horses that are tied to plastic yard chairs, and the yes. ho- the horse treats it as if they can't move the chair. They exactly rope tied to the chair so they don't even try. Exactly. They're like, well, I'm tired of this, and all my past experiences tell me that if I try to move, I can't move, so I'm not even going to try it at this point. Exactly. Exactly. You know? So, um, but anyway, so that's to the circle. So mm-hmm. he um, he is strapped to the chair uh, by wrist. Well, it's actually higher than the wrist, um, just a little bit higher than the wrist. Um, and um, with ankles and a gag and the gag was tied around the back of the head it was just a you know piece of cloth and then it was zip tied shut and i tried to pull it out of his mouth and i could not like i tried to stretch it because it was kind of stretchy material you know and rightfully so but i tried to i tried to pull it out of his mouth and i couldn't and um basically around basically so that the audience knows that no one's a ventriloquist Exactly, because um, we're because we're sitting in we're sitting in the complete dark and nobody can see him. Mm-hmm. And um, and when spirit is manifesting, they are, they're manifesting a full bodily form, and you can hear their shoes on the ground. Now, I was paying very close attention to the way that his shoes sounded. I got to physically touch, like you know, he took off his shoes, and he, you know, we got to investigate them. They were very light sketcher shoes, and um, you know, like I did all of the stuff. I even over tightened the zip ties a little bit just to make sure that he wasn't like slipping out of it somehow and then slipping them back in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That I mean everything. I checked all of it. I even accidentally over tightened one and it kind of caused a little bit of an issue with him getting the thing on. But he did not change it. He did not switch it out. He just you know, it just took a couple extra seconds. So that was a really good sign too, because he just, you know if 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 he was faking it at all, then everything would have to be just so, uh-huh. and he wouldn't have been able to adjust, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, and it's just, um, hold on, I have a child right now in my bathroom. I think I'm going to send you to the corner right now because you're not listening. When? Well, good, because you're going to the corner then. You can, you can listen on your way to the corner. <laughs> um, so, you know, we get everything's all set, and he um, and one of his things too is that he wears this blue cardigan sweater that's buttoned up, and then it's zip tied, so it's impossible for him to get up over his head. But he's also strapped down to the chair and all of that. So, um, and um, the first person that came through was his main guide, and his main guide started with the other checker, started talking to him first. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember what he said to him, but then he said, you know, well, can I touch you? And he said, yes. And then, you know, he put his hand on his head. And then he came over to me. And mind you, at this point, I'm still, uh, you know, I haven't, like, I'm still watching. I'm still, you know, being, you know, skeptical in a good way. Mm -hmm. And he comes up to me, and the his foot hit my toe, mind you, I'm barefoot. Everybody's barefoot or soft, but I was barefoot. And I felt his foot come up to mine, and it was ever so soft. Like, I could tell it didn't slide because I could hear the steps. And then when the foot landed, it was it just was kissing the edge of my toe. And the voice that was coming, so I'm 5'3", the medium is about 5'5", five, five, 
five, six, maybe. He's not a very tall man at all. Yeah. And so sitting down, this voice came from like a six and a half foot person. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, please get out. You are supposed to be in the corner. Please get out. Um, and, um, you know, he um, starts talking to me and he goes, uh-huh. and he goes, uh, so you did the other checking, right? And I said, yes. And he goes, yeah, you're, um, what, what did he say? He, he said, um, so this is the aberration said, speaking to you. Yes. Okay. And he said, um, he said, good, because I like the skeptical ones to check. <laughs> and, he, and he goes, you are skeptical, aren't you? And I, I, all I could do was laugh. And I said, yeah. And he said, good. And um, he's like, are you satisfied? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then he said, may I touch you? And when he put his hand on my head, it was like, it was on the front of the top part of my forehead and his fingers went all the way down to, you know, like the back, the crown of my head. Uh-huh. And it was like a cap was on and the fingers were on the side of my head. And, you know, David did not have that big of hand. Yeah. And, um, you know, and every, and the toe thing, though, that was what really got me because I knew what David's shoes felt like. Mm-hmm. And if he'd gotten out of his chair, however, he who he needed it, and he came over to me, there would, without night vision goggles, there's no way he could have done that without, I, it couldn't have been that soft. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's just, there's just no possible way. But even still, I was still like, okay, well, I'm, still, I'm like, wow, that is incredible. And I'm, you know, you know, we're going about the seance and he goes around and there, um, you know, people are asking questions and it. There were some people in there were that were like lay people that didn't really know anything, and so they're asking questions that I could have answered. And I'm like, oh, we're wasting our valuable time on questions that you could have just asked anybody in this room. And you don't need to ask spirit about, yeah. you know, <laughs> about this, this stuff. And um, so we only got one personal message, and it went to one of my friends, and it was her father who came through with his, you know, direct voice and. It's, um, you know, and it's raspy and it's kind of whispery because it's the first time he's ever done it, right? Yeah. But the information that he brought through, he brought through um, names and he um, he referenced a particular dish that was very special to her. And um, and she's English. So um, it was Yorkshire Yorkshire pudding. Mm-hmm. You're going to be quiet. And that's not something that any of us would even know about, you know. And, um, yeah. So, and I don't remember what else, but everything that he addressed was very identical. Even, he even forgot stuff. And he, like, was trying to, like, say something, and, it, and it's like, well, it sounds, you know, like somebody's trying to fake it. But that's how her dad was. He forgot everything. Yeah. You know, and then he made some comment about how, you know, oh, your mother told me that she should have just came because she knew I was going to forget something. <laughs> and that's exactly how her mother was, too, you know? Yeah. And, um, and, uh, and then there was a, um, he works with a, a boy named Timmy who passed when he was nine and three quarters. Uh-huh. So when they come through on the spirit side, they come through um, as their, as whatever they were when they made their transition. Yeah. So if you only made it nine years in your physical body, well, that's all you got to work with on the spirit side when you come back to the physical is, is that. Um, but, you know, even though he, he sounded like a child, but he had much greater wisdom because he, he said he died in 1902. Yeah. So, um, but he's, um, and he works with a trumpet. Do you know what a trumpet is in mediumship? Not like a musical trumpet. No. Okay. So it's a big cylinder. Isaac, you go back to the corner right now. You should be. You're supposed to be in the corner and you're not following the rules. Go. One, two. Well, then follow the rules and you won't have to worry about it. Um, <laughs> So what it is is it's a cylinder, and the bottom is open, and the top is open, kind of like um, like the cheerleader megaphone, uh-huh. kind of like that, except for it's way smaller at the top, and it's made out of aluminum. And then they put um, we put a uh, glow-in-the-dark band around the end so that you can see it when you're sitting in the dark. And Timmy grabbed this trumpet, and it was all over the room, everywhere. Like, there's no way that, it, you know... The ceiling was way too high for it to have been medium standing up and whipping this thing around. And the rate at which it was going across the room was incredible. 
And then it hit me in the face, but it didn't hurt. <laughs> it hit me right in the nose, but it didn't hurt at all. And and then he, um, and then when he was done, he said something about hitting somebody. I said, "Yeah, you hit me in the nose." And he ran over to me, David, and I could hear the footsteps of him running over to me, and his presence right in front of me. And he apologized and put his hands on my knees and said, "I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hit you." You know, and then he like touched my shoulder, and then he grabbed my finger, and it was, um, it was so soft, and the fingers were were smaller, you know, much smaller than David's fingers were, and I, because I did my best to uh, touch back and to feel the size of the fingers and all of that, mm -hmm. and there was no way, because I felt two or three of them at the same time, just in case maybe he was using his pinky or something, no way. All of yeah, these this, very small hands. This was a kid. Yeah, it was definitely a kid, and, you know, and he... Um, yeah, I mean, he came over to me several times, and it was just, I was like, I was just, wow. Like, it was Well, just you've, been so, looking, you've been looking for permission slips all over the place, and it seems... I have. And you know what's really funny, too, is um, my friend who's, who told me to make sure that I, you know, am testing and everything, um, he told me that Louis Armstrong is one of the um, guys in, uh, or one of the spirits in David's team, and um, and that makes people think that he's hope like that he might be faking it because you know Louis is a celebrity. Yeah. So what I did was I looked up this information because I was going to ask Louis questions about his life because he should be able to answer them, right? Uh huh. You know, like you know he was married four times. He didn't have any biological children when he was alive. There was one yeah. that was discovered after he died, and you know all of this stuff. So I was going to ask the question something um, something like, "How are your daughters?" because that is a, presu a presuming question on my part. But Louis didn't have daughters. He had one daughter after he died. He didn't have any. So if I, you know what I mean? So there should have, I should have gotten a response. But what happened in the seance was that Louis came in and he Hold sang on. one of his songs. Hold on, did you say he had one daughter after he died? <laughs> he got a woman pregnant, uh. and then he died while she was pregnant. Okay, and I just want to the caution there. Yes, no, and it was found, um, and they didn't ever do a paternity test, but one of Louis, like Louis' account manager after uh -huh. he died or whatever, stop, Silas, okay. don't do uh, that to her. I'm sorry for yelling. He's I was just making dog, sure, so. like, Louis wasn't being, like, ghost pimp, like, you know. Oh, yeah. Back, like, <laughs> I'm going to no, the living. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and he, it wasn't even by a lot, it wasn't even, there was no paternity test or anything, they just. His account manager was like, yeah, you know what, I really do believe that this is, this is Louis' child and, you know, so whatever. But, mm -hmm. um, but in the seance, he comes in and he sings his song and then he left. There was no opportunity to ask him anything. Interesting. And I'm like, and that was the only thing that I had prepared for. And I didn't get that opportunity, but I got so many other things. That there's just there's no explanation for, and then Louis at the end, maybe Louis embarrassed, and he knew you were going to ask, so he like cut out of there before you had a chance to embarrass him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's very true too, because I thought about asking about his wife, but this one was his favorite because he had four. You know, and um, you know, see if he could give me a name is really what I was looking for. This and um, embarrass me, I'm out of here. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um. And, uh, okay, I'm just going through the whole thing here. And then, um, oh, and we were singing to raise the vibration, and it almost, like, and they would come in after the song ended, so I would stop singing and really pay attention to see if I could hear any shuffling or moving around in a cabinet, because I was sitting super, duper close to it. I mean, I was sitting way, in you think it would be a good three, idea, I think it would be a good idea to make this conversation a PSEC episode? Obviously, I don't do that sort of shit without permission. Right. Did you re are you recording all this? Well, my Skype does that automatically with Skype recorder, so obviously. Yeah, well, yeah, that would be awesome because. Yeah. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't like put things public without permission because that would be something called being a dick, and I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. Yeah, yeah cause I can, I can totally do that if you want this story out there. Um. Well, you know what? How about um. I'd like to have kind of a, well, I don't know, record it and we'll, um, and put it out there because, you know, just do it. <laughs> okay. 
I just don't do those things without permission, here, so. so, you know. Yeah, no, go for it. Um, so, and then at the end of the seance, you know, he's strapped down into this big wooden chair, which is, you know, it, it belongs to um, one of Janet's friends, so he didn't bring the chair with him. And, um, you know, big wooden chair, and there was a big thump at the beginning of the last song that we sung, and when we turned the lights on, he was out of the cabinet in the middle of the room about 12 feet from where he started. They had picked him up and put him out there, and his sweater was backwards. And he was still fully restrained, and his hands were a little swollen from the restraint. And I checked that out like, I mean... Even, like, after he got out of it all, you know, I checked it all, and it was all, because I paid attention to, like, uh, they used zip ties, so I paid attention to how much length was on the zip tie, you know, when, before he went into the cabinet, and I checked all of that stuff coming out, and it was the exact same zip ties, the exact, it was, there was no changes, other than his sweater backwards. And, I, you know, I'm like... Dang, Spirit, you put me up for integrity checks for sure. And then when we were all done and, you know, he's um, you know, he's sitting back in the sanctuary, everybody's waiting to talk to him. And I, I always wait till the last so that I can really get some time rather than, um, you know, jumping in the line. And yeah. so I was talking to him and I, you know, and I told, uh, and he started out with me telling me thank you for checking everything like I did. He's like, a lot of people don't go through and check it. He's like, and I love it when you do. Because that's the whole freaking point, <laughs> <laughs> you know, is, um, is that, you know, he's like, I don't want to sit here all, like, strapped up and whatever, you know, but that's what needs to be done right now. So, um, you know, and so I shared with him my meditation, and he started laughing, of course, when he found out that we had both been getting the same information from our guys and didn't know it, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really fun. So he, so I'm going to talk with him. And, uh, you know, keep in touch with him, but, you know, I personally feel like uh, physical phenomena could be done in broad daylight. It's just that everybody's so afraid of it right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's much easier to do it in the dark because even though you feel, um, even though you feel the presence and you get to hear them and um, the, um, you know, and everything, it's much different seeing Oh, honey, you got to charge. You can play this, though. You can't charge. you got to leave it charged. This one's good. You can play that one. Um, you know, so there's, uh, and I found out, you know, there's, all, there's less than 10 of these guys in the world, and most of them are men, because, um, unfortunately, most of the criticism and the skepticism comes from within the community, not without. Yeah, of course. And um, and because it's all ego and jealousy, and everybody wants to be able to you know do this stuff, and they can't, so they try to expose everything. And then, um, well, it's like within the truth movement, you know, disagree with somebody on something, and all of a sudden you're being called a troll or a government agent or a psyop or whatever, simply just because somebody got all butt hurt that you didn't bow down and absolutely agree with everything they're saying on a topic and you're like well actually I disagree with this part you know I think this happened and not this and it's like how dare you challenge me if you have a difference of opinion then you must be a government agent trying to undermine me and it's like yeah whatever go fuck yourself <laughs> yeah it's, you know no you know your opinion is not that important to me I'm sorry but <laughs> You know, yeah, and it's, um, you know, people really want to hold on to, you know, certain aspects of things, and, you know, they want, it's like they search so long to find an answer, and for somebody to come in and tell them that, hey, you know, there's a little bit more to it than, than just that, you know, then they, yeah. it's like everything is wrong, and it's like, well, no, you can, like, learn and grow and yeah, another, you know, another thing is that um, the belief system that that somebody who has a bit of a shady past and or might even still be a little bit shady, like, they're not allowed to be spiritual and they're not allowed to speak truth because of that. It's like, wait a minute, why not? Like, okay, take, for example, Teal Swan. Um, she takes a lot of frickin' flag and, like, I've, you know, I've looked into... Um, you know, the, the evidence and stuff about her background, like, you know, 
her her story contradicts a lot of other things that are out there. And here's the way I look at it. I don't care if she's lying about her past or not. Like, really? I don't give a flying shit, and that's irrelevant to me. What I care about is what is she doing now? Is the information she's giving now relevant? Is the information she's giving now valid? Because past is past, you know? It, it's But what's what's going on? Yeah, but if she's lying today about her past, she's still a liar. Yeah, but... See, I, 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 it's, to me, it's all circumstantial. I can't prove or disprove. But when she talks about spirituality, and because she does what she refers to as shadow work, and other people refer to as integration, but basically, you know, dealing with your demons, facing your shit, and integrating and, and moving forward. Um, if, you know, if the things that she says about that is useful information, then who she's decided to be as a person or not does not negate the information. It's like, it, it's like saying, oh, well, Hitler used a hammer, so all hammers are evil because Hitler used a hammer. And that's like the absol that's the absolutist, extremist, neurotic, pathological mindset that we've been programmed into. Uh, people ignore the message and they focus only on their opinion of the messenger. I mean, I say to people, I fully believe that if Hitler had publicly announced that the sky is blue, we'd all be claiming it's purple right now, and anybody who points out that it's blue would be called an anti-Semite and a Nazi and a terrorist and whatever. You know, there's all this extremist mentality. Nobody wants to analyze what Teal Scott is actually saying within her practice. Nobody wants to look at what, what she's saying about, you know, about the ego and about spirit and about this and about that. You know, all these people just want to be like, I'm not willing to listen to you because you're a poo-poo head. Well, I think, you know, her being a poo-poo head or not is irrelevant. Why don't we look at the information? You know, um, if, uh, you know, just as an analogy, if a, if, a, if a scumbag pays you $10 million, it's still $10 million, isn't it? It, yeah, it doesn't make that money turn into like fake money. It's not like it tur it instantly turns into toilet paper as soon as they hand it to you. Money is money. Yeah. A hammer is a hammer. The sky is blue. The grass is green. Yeah, but, but here's the thing, you know, if somebody has been, you know, lying to you about all this stuff, even if they say something true, well, you're less likely to believe it yeah. if they can't even be truthful about something that doesn't matter. What? Shh. No, but I'll get you something else yeah. to eat. I do, I do understand you know, it's, that. But, yeah, I mean, her but, past doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Like, it doesn't matter how she got all of that. It doesn't matter how she got here or whatever. It's, but if she's lying about it, what is she hiding? And then that, that makes her untrustworthy because if you aren't willing to tell me the truth about how you got here, how do I know that what you're telling me is coming from a good place and isn't just a place of control or deceit or are you trying to make money or whatever? Good, you know, good just, question. I don't know. I was kind of weird feeling about her. Yeah, well, here's here's the answer though. Here's the answer though. The those sorts of questions, like you just asked, are completely valid. But it also reflects people's unwillingness to use their own discernment. Because if you can use your own discernment, then it doesn't matter who is handing you the hammer, so to speak. It doesn't absolutely matter who is saying the sky is blue or not. It, 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 you don't have to be like, wait a minute, well, an untrustworthy person is saying the sky is blue, so is it really blue, or are they tricking me? If you have your own discernment, then you're going to be able to recognize whether or not someone is tricking you, whether or not someone is handing ha handing you an orange, or if they really just ha have a pile of dog poo in their hand, and they're just telling you it's an orange. Because you can discern the difference between an orange and dog shit. Unless of, Absolutely. Course, unless, of course, you have no discernment, then maybe you can't. You know what I mean? Well, exactly. And unfortunately, a lot of people today don't have that. And so they are being yeah. misled and misguided and, um, you know, thinking they're doing the right thing and people are just taking their money, you know. And I don't know. Teal Swan always get, kind of gave me a funky feeling and, uh, you know, because she's, you know, she's been in my reality before. Um, have you met her? And, no, but my aunt was all like it was all about her but my aunt is all of on my aunt is like a perpetual student she learns all of this stuff but if she really practiced what she was learning she wouldn't still be learning at the level yeah. she's learning you know what i mean you know, cryon, and, um, cryon had an analogy about that about light workers too imagine somebody goes to medical school for eight years they graduate okay so what are you gonna do now oh i'm gonna go take another eight years in medical school so they take another eight years in medical school and they're out okay what are you gonna do now i'm gonna go take another eight years in medical school it's like when are you going to apply the knowledge Exactly, exactly. So, um, but yeah, um, you know, so, I don't know, I always, 
you know what? Maybe what it is is that she's too mystical for me. You know, Teal Swan is not your is not your real name. <laughs> you know, it's just it's it's one of those things. It's like, okay, why do you have to be so mystical? Why do you have to be so uh, secretive about stuff? Why does everything have to be so you know like woo woo? <laughs> well, <laughs> well. You I've know, watched, I've watched like, a bunch of her videos. I do like how straightforward she is about a lot of things. I mean, yeah. she, she admits that she's nuts. She admits that she's neurotic. She admits that she has issues. She's not there saying, oh, I am the poster child of perfect mental health. Listen to me. I am the most credible person in the world. She's not saying that. I mean, she completely, you know, fully admits that she's neurotic and nuts and everything else and by all means do not hang on her word. Um, and that she's just, you know, on this journey like everybody else and facing her own neurosis and paradigms, and that's why she calls it shadow work. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, you know what? And maybe that might be the thing, too, is that she's, she's – her and I have a different focus. I don't want to fix people. There's nothing to be fixed. I have been, I have seen tool. her, I haven't seen her say she wants to fix anybody either. In fact, I've heard her say quite the opposite. I've heard her say that society tricks us into thinking we're broken, and so when we think we're broken, of course we're going to act neurotic. So have you really listened to any of her material, like, at all? It's been a while, because I started watching something and it just, it just turned me off. So maybe this is my cue to go research some stuff in there, because even if you know, you don't have to be liking anybody to learn. So. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you know, so I'll reiterate, I am neither condoning nor condemning Teal at all. Right. I'm doing neither of those things whatsoever. Um, I am just simply encouraging an attitude of discernment, and that even even if she were fake or this or that or whatever, why not watch her videos? Just not, just ignore the messenger. Look at the data in her videos. You know, if she's saying the sky is blue and the grass is green and rocks are hard, it doesn't mean she's wrong just because she might be a dishonest person. Again, I'm not saying she is or isn't a dishonest right, right. person. I'm not taking sides. I'm just saying hypothetically, let's say she is. Well, it doesn't automatically make her wrong when she says the grass is green and the sky is blue and rocks are hard and feathers are soft. So then when people go and believe the opposite, just because somebody they don't like said it that way, well, the sky must be purple and the grass must be orange and, and rocks must be soft and feathers must be rock hard because someone I don't like said this, so now I must go and believe the opposite because someone I don't like said something. That is still falling into a trap. Yeah. And people do that all the time. I don't like oh, that for sure. so he must be wrong. Well, he makes mistakes like any other human, and he's arrogant and full of himself and so on, but that doesn't mean he's absolutely wrong about everything. But what do people do? He said this, so now I have to go and believe the opposite because I don't like him because he's an arrogant asshole. He, he is an arrogant asshole. Doesn't mean he's wrong about everything, though. Very right. Very right. And, you know, it's... I'm going to... I'll just have to check her out and see what, you know... No judgments, but I, I really don't know anything about her, so... Yeah. So like I said, I'm not I'm not I'm not claiming, oh yeah, go yeah, go check out Teal stuff, man. She's awesome and I'm not saying that and I'm not condemning her either. Right. I mean regardless of whether anybody You're just saying, out, Hey, I learned on or, or who and go check it out, that's all. Yeah, it doesn't matter who. I mean Teal Swan, Cryon, Donald Trump, Alex Jones, whoever. Pick your human. Um, you know, whoever you're looking into checking out, you know, just look at their information as information and, you know, don't get don't get hooked into a <coughs> oh, they're so cool, they're right about everything or ooh, they kind of creep me out. So that means everything they say the opposite must be true. <clears throat> because that's just a dichotomy. It's two sides of the exact same coin. And it's incredibly stupid. Yeah. No, for sure. And it's, you know, you just got to pick for yourself and and not worry about anybody else because everybody else is, you know, everybody's going to have something to say anyway. Yeah. So that's all I'm looking to encourage. And the same, you know, with when people have experiences like, you know, what you had, definitely check everything. 
I mean, you didn't believe in the medium. You weren't like, oh, he's a physical manifestation medium. Oh, yeah. No, there were. But everything. One of the reverends was starstruck, and I'm like, oh. But nor did nor did you say, well, I believe they're probably full of crap. So I'm just going to close my mind to everything. You know, you didn't right. you didn't go with, with these extremes that most people go into. Right. Because most people just go into these crazy extremes. Yeah, no, and it, and there was definitely, you know, both sides of that. And, um, you know, but it was, you know, an incredible, incredible experience to, um, you know, to, um, oh, yes, uh, Silver Birch came through, and he is a um, an Indian guy who has lived like 3,000 years ago, but he is... Um, He's very powerful. He's his energy is the highest it can be until you transition to the place where you can no longer access the physical world because you don't need to anymore, or at least this physical world, I should say. Um, yeah, I mean, if, you know, the, if, if the, the, the level of crap, involvement, like, I can't. Physical's just a point of view. <laughs> exactly. So I can't. I, I can't say anything other than this physical world. You know, he's at the. He's maxed out when he levels up, if you will, then he will no longer have a reason to come back to our world. He will be needed somewhere else, wherever that may be. And um, when he came through, the um, the energy was, it was so powerful. He actually, we were warned that it would be so powerful, it might upset our stomach. And when I got home, Last night, so mind you, okay, I did not, I ate around one thirty, two o'clock. Yeah. Because, I think I told you about... Well, keep in mind the good- power of suggestion, though. Sometimes a stomach can get upset just because someone says, oh, well, this might make your stomach upset. Absolutely. So and I would pay attention to that, right? I default to so, the suggestion. <laughs> yes. No, no, absolutely. And I was aware of that in the moment. I even thought that to myself. And I said, Daphne, if you're going to get nauseous, it's because it's actually happening, not because you suggested it. You know, like I was... Um, I was aware of it, but I didn't get nauseous in the room. But when I got home last night, all of my insides started bubbling, and it was just like all out of nowhere. I mean, I had, I hadn't, I got home close to eleven o'clock last night, and I hadn't eaten since two. And I, you know, my system was clear before I went in there. I had no food in my system. I had nothing in my body that could have created gas, and it did. You know, like, and it was really, like, it was kind of uncomfortable. And it was out of the blue, and, it, and you know, so there was something going on energetically if it um, was something, because it was just a whole, like, upheaval in my system. And I just, um, I had to go lay down. And my whole body was zinging last night. Like, it, like I couldn't, I couldn't touch any, anybody else, like, when... When I came home, I like just kissed Mike on the mouth. But I didn't like hug him or anything because it was just too much. And yeah. um, you know, and then I pulled. I love my oracle card, which is so funny because you know, especially in my community of mediums, they frown upon these oracle cards. And I'm like, you guys are missing out on a lot of fun. They just don't want you to to be dependent on them to get your messages. But I think they're really fun because when you ask when you're asking for questions for yourself you can totally skew the answer if you want it to be one thing, you know? And I've done that to myself a lot that, yeah. um, I, you know, the Oracle cards just help keep me in alignment so that I'm not um, putting myself into my answer. You know, people and, so focus on their, on their strong beliefs and misery and suffering that they actually forget to have fun. Like, you know, mm-hmm. in some conversations, you know, people will act like, Oh well, you know, being being civilizations that are on a high enough level, they they don't use spaceships because they don't need them anymore. I'm like, why wouldn't they use them? You have a car. You don't need to walk through the woods. Well, have you ever walked through the woods? Well, yeah. Why did you walk through the woods? Well, because I enjoyed doing it and it was fun. It's the woods. Okay, so just because an advanced race might not need ships, just like you're advanced enough to not need to walk through the woods, aren't they allowed to have some fun? Exactly, exactly. You know, and 
It's like it's stuff. You know. Smug. I'm I'm superior. I'm above fun. I cannot have any fun anymore because I am superior and enlightened. That's not enlightened. That's the head up your ass. That's like the opposite of enlightened. Yeah. If you want to be enlightened, just lighten up. You know. <laughs> it's like. Exactly. Exactly. And it's like these are tools, and you know. But unfortunately, you know, um, I'm the exception to everything. You know. I'm not going to hold on to all those things because I don't want to be dependent on them. I meditate in chaos so that <laughs> I can do it, you know, wherever I am, whenever I need it, you know, with the, t- you know, with the TV on, the boys in here playing, you know, and I will <laughs> shut myself down. You know, I'm not going to be doing any sort of, you know, phenomena at that moment. But, you know, and it's just like everybody wants to have these conditions. Everybody wants to have... You know, these things, and I understand that because I'm coming out of that myself. You know, there's still some things I have to remind myself that if you want to don't meditate, have to be done. If you want to meditate in chaos, that's easy. Simply go into observation mode. Spike up your curiosity and go into pure observation instead of trying to worry about everything. Just, like, observe the chaos around you. Take, just, mm-hmm. just go into that pure out like you're watching a movie, you know? Just, like, take, yeah. take a moment to forget that you play a role in it and just go into pure observation mode, and you will see all sorts of things that you were missing before doing that. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's what uh, I do, and I've had to practice it. I mean, it's it's not something that, you know, you just, like, you know, naturally go into or something, you know. I mean, it's just... It, it, right, it absolutely takes practice. Something you got to learn how to, how to do through practice, because, like, yeah, I can't... <laughs> Ego really has a lot, or shall I say false ego, has a lot against that sort of thing. It's just like... Right, of course. Yeah, but, you know, I just, you know, I just think about everybody who was in the room last night, and, you know, the... um, It's just, it's so crazy to me how many people are still lost um, and go to a spiritualist church and are so, you know, not willing to accept their own divinity. You know, it's just, it's so, it's so weird to me. I'm like, you get everything. Like, I mean, you get answers directly from the spirit. Like, you're... And even last night, we're getting it right from the horse's mouth, you know. But also experiences last night are what help people make that, um, you know, make that transition, you know. I, mean, I know that it's a weird experience right now. Remember how I said I had, I had bought this used, used laptop for Katie? Um, uh-huh. It's just a beater, and it might be a good beginning laptop. Um, uh-huh. we, you know, we, we, uh, booted it up in the store and I went into the BIOS and, you know, checked everything out and all that. And like, right now I'm, I'm trying to boot it up and everything and I just cannot get the freaking screen to engage. Like it's on, hmm. but there's like nothing on the screen. Nothing is coming up. I, I find that to be very interesting. I mean, I tested it before I bought it obviously, but like for some weird reason, it's like, <laughs> it's not... And I'm huh. up now, and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Maybe I'm getting my own belief systems challenged or something. It's definitely because <laughs> I mean, it was totally booting up in the freaking store. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, maybe you weren't supposed to be messing with it right now. I don't know. That's what usually happens to me when I want when there's something that I want to do and it's just not working. <laughs> just forget it for the moment and move on, and then cause there's something else I need to be doing. Yeah, but I mean, it's like I can, you know, it's like I can multitask this and, you know, and talk to you and everything. It's not like I need a lot of concentration for, you know, putting with the right. stuff. Right. To not, realize that there's something on the screen or not. <laughs> I'm not installing anything on it or anything like that. I'm just, I'm just putting around a little bit and, you know... All of a sudden, just for like, you know, just, just for no damn reason, just this thing is not turning on. And, it, you know, it, it did turn on just, just fine in the store. And so I just, I find it interesting. We're talking about, you know, belief systems and perceptions and things working or not. And, you know, energy and 
this, that, and the other, and, you know, look at what little experience I'm having at the moment with this, just for, like, no apparent reason. <laughs> and it's, it's just funny, because I did verify it as, you know, as, as working, so I'm just like, hmm, okay, it's interesting. It's funny. Yeah, it's, it's completely funny. <sighs> I'm just like, okay. <laughs> So I need to create a website of sorts. And right now I've got to do it free. Um, the screen just came on. See, I just shifted my frickin' belief system. Here's the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't prove this in a court of law. This is not a, a video hangout. This is, you know... Uh, <laughs> This is just an audio recording, but yeah, I'm, I'm back in the BIOS again. Look at that. I got it. You know, I got everything okay. here. Like, okay, well, that's freaking interesting. Yeah. That's funny as hell. It's like, I was just like, okay, this is what it is. Fuck it. I'm not going to put a judgment on it. And boom, we're booting up. I'm like, okay. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that was interesting. Alrighty then. <laughs> Universe being a. <laughs> so yeah, sorry, you were saying about all this stuff. I just had to, because this just happened, and I'm like, okay. I just had to, like, stare. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, no, that's funny. Um, yeah, no, I'm creating, um, I'm redoing my, a uh, blog site that I was doing this year, and I stopped writing on it in July, but I have, um, you know, I, I've been writing, I just haven't been, it's not just not, ugh, it is just not on the internet, so I could, um, wow, people are still, holy shit, I have not looked at this thing since, like, July, and it looks like people have been, I've been getting visitors almost every day. And I haven't written in nearly three months. <laughs> well, that's fun. Okay. So, yeah, no, I'm... Oh, more that, that reminds me, recently, like, I just... I uploaded, a, you know, a new video called You're Not Here to Fit In. And, like, almost overnight, I, I get, like, over 1,200 views and 121 likes on YouTube. And wow. and I, it's it's funny because that that for you know likes to views it puts it at about a ratio of one to ten roughly and usually my you know likes to views ratio is is not nearly that good I mean you know you could have like oh yeah you could have like ten ten or twenty thousand views and have like you know ten likes on the, on the freaking thing you know I mean it's right yeah I've seen those where it's like even on Facebook it'll have like five point seven million views and then like two thousand likes. Yeah, so it's definitely not an even thing at all. Um, but on this, it's like roughly, you know, a 1 to 10 ratio. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. Because it's not usually that good. I mean, even on a video, like, you see one of those crazy, like, videos that has, like, 300 million views and shit, you'll see, like, 20,000 likes. You know, you're not going to see 150 million likes. You know, yeah. you're probably not even going to see a million likes in those cases. So it's just, it's really interesting how uneven that ratio usually is. Yet with this, on the topic of you're not here to fit in, you know, it's basically like a 1 to 10. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. That's unusual. Yeah. Yeah. And what was the post? And what was the video? You're not here to fit in. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, it's. It, I know it's a good one, and it's a, it's short. It's not like an uber long one. It's real short, and I know it's good. But wow, <laughs> that ra that ratio is just crazy. It oh, is. and then and then I to and then I had told you that um, um, Sebastian Zubchek, the CEO of TSU, he liked. And he, you know, he replied on that one post saying, "Ah, oh, very interesting." You know, video I made asking if uh, Facebook is waging war with uh, with TSU, and I posted mm -hmm. a screen capture because my friend Trent 
um, this is this morning, he messaged me saying, Facebook d uh, deleted my t my group TSU Love. He said, cunts, they deleted all of them. And I replied to him, yes, they did. I'm surprised they aren't deleting the remaining more popular TSU groups as well as the official TSU page. And I posted that screen capture, also shared with Sebastian, and I, and I put a thing there that says, Facebook is crossing some hardcore censorship lines in regards to TSU. Not only have all photos and videos containing TSU links been completely annihilated, most of the TSU Facebook groups have also been destroyed. I'm shocked that Sebastian's Facebook accounts and the official TSU Facebook pages haven't also been attacked. Zuckerberg seems to be having a hissy fit. And, you know, now during this conversation that we're having, because I'd also posted that on TSU, I'm noticing that Sebastian Subcheck also liked this post. He didn't comment on this one for, uh, this time, but, you know, he clicked like on it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Facebook is really seeing TSU as a threat and throwing, like, a major temper tantrum, and I'm laughing. As a matter of fact, I've been halfway tempted to make a downfall parody. Um, do you know what downfall parodies are? Mm -mm. Have you ever seen right. those videos that says, like, Hitler hates the Cubs? And, 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 or, you know, hates this, or doesn't like that, or is complaining about this or that, and you see, like, Hitler it, with a room full of SS people, and he's just, like, going ape shit and screaming about things, and then there's the English subtitles, and people, that, like, put in whatever subtitles they want to, like, match the little parody they're making. Mm -hmm. have you, yeah. Have you, have, you, have you seen those? Uh-huh. Well, I, I have. Well, I was. I, I'm really tempted to to make one called um, "Hitler Hates uh, TSU," and like have the subtitles uh, talk about how him and Zuckerberg have, have been launching attacks on TSU, but the result is everybody's just laughing at them and thinking they're pathetic, and a rant about like, I remember the day when the, when strong-fisted tyranny was respected. Now everybody just laughs. <laughs> What is wrong with people? <laughs> to that effect, I've been really tempted to like make a make a downfall parody on that. <laughs> That's funny. Damn it! What is going on? Oh, okay, okay. All kinds of crazy synchronistic stuff happening lately. Just, yeah. Right. Well. <laughs> It's always synchronistic, right? <laughs> yeah, but there there are there are high tides and there are low tides, and boy, this has definitely been one of the more high tide sort of moments. Yeah. Crazy. Oh, this is a freaking post. That's why. God damn it. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to get a new page on here on WordPress, like a homepage, because when I first created. Um, created this. It was just for blogging. Mm -hmm. But I just want to put up, I don't need a whole lot. I just want some space to put up, um, you know, like my pricing and just, you know, somewhere where I can collect people's stuff. And right now I'm just going to do it on WordPress mm -hmm. because I'm already there. You might want to ask Katarina what she's using. I know she said she didn't really, um, I don't know, she was using one thing, said she didn't care for switch to something else. I forgot if she switched from WordPress or to WordPress or what she did, but I know Katarina was having issues with something or another and then switched to something that she felt better suited her. So you might want to ask her about that experience because, you know, she's just looking to keep things simple too and just, you know, do what she's looking to do and not have to, like, go crazy trying to figure things out. So... Um, she's I, kind of in a similar boat, and she's been having some successes with that. So I want to hit her up and ask what you know what she's um, been into. Yeah, I will. Um, I really um, want to use Squarespace, but they just charge you for it. And right now, in this moment, I can't do that. I guess I could put up a 14-day free trial. Maybe that's why I'm having such difficulty doing this right now, because I just need to go over there and do that stuff. Um, I think she she used to use Squarespace for something, and now she doesn't. Yeah, because I had um, I was starting on Wix, but then what? Um, Maybe the universe is saying, "Don't be in such a rush to do anything right now. Give yourself time to research." Or I'm just having difficulty because I'm not in the right place. Because I, I did. Because uh, think about it. I did that last week. No, no, no. I've already done that. Are you, are, you sitting, are, you, are you sitting there being like, oh, I need to do this and this and this and that and that and that, or are you calming down and going, oh, 
Let's do some research. I started working on a website a week ago, and it wasn't. I started getting frustrated with it, so I just stopped. And I said, "I can't. Um, I can't grow a forty foot tree in a week. So fuck it. Trees don't work." No, <laughs> no. I just said, "All right. Well, I'm getting frustrated, and so I'm just going to put this on hold. And when I feel called to it, I'm going to come back to it." And then I started seeing these posts in uh, one of the Facebook groups, and it's for businesses, and everybody was saying how you don't want to use Wix. You know, it is really easy to drag and drop and all of that, but ultimately you're missing out on all the free search engine stuff because it doesn't index properly with the search engine. So you get more, you know, drive-by traffic if you use Squarespace instead. And it's like, hey, please stop, uh, you know, because it's got um, the same sort of intuitive uh, setup on it. Mm-hmm. So... I suppose that's just where I need to go because that's feeling better as I'm talking about it. <laughs> and like, I'm, everything I'm doing with WordPress right now, and I'm not frustrated with WordPress at all. It's just more like, okay, well, it's, um, well, it's not there. So let me look over here. Okay, well, it's not there. Let me look over here. You know, and I'm paying more attention to our conversation. So that way, I would have to just- suggest getting Katarina's insights just because it couldn't hurt. Okay. Have you seen her page? Um, KatarinaRoy.com, I do believe. Oh, didn't she update it to Edwards? Oh, did she update it to Roy? Yeah, she did. Yep, I'm heading there right now, and oh, there it is. There's her website. You can. Oh, there she is. Yeah, you can look at that and see if uh, you like what she's done with that. I mean, you know. Yeah. Because I really, I just, I just want something simple. I just want to get something out there so it's there, and then I can perfect it and do all the stuff. Yep. You know, because for me, um, I get so hung up with the all the details that I, I'm not actually working on my business. I'm working in it, and I yeah. don't want to get wrapped up into that. So I want to make sure that everything is just like easy, and I can just kind of like put stuff in, and then I can go back later and redo, you know, and make it all super wonderful like she's done with hers. I mean, her her site is still, like, a major work in progress, obviously. Um, she actually had a lot more on her old site than on her, on her new site because she's still building this new site, which is why she hasn't been, like, you know, advertising it hardcore. And she's giving herself permission to just kind of, you know, take her time and, you know, evolve it at her own pace instead of driving herself nuts. Yeah. Yeah, her session, sessions page is not live. Yeah. So you, you know, you might um, might just want to have a little chit-chat and, you know, ask her what's been working for her and uh, why she feels that it's a benefit to her and so on and just uh, get her perspectives on that. You know, not that she's any absolute authority on anything, but it's just good to have all sorts of different perspectives on things just to kind of compare and, and you know, figure things out. Just a bit of a test drive, you know? Yeah. Let curiosity drive you. You'll be better off. Rather than, oh, yeah. I have to do this, or i got to get this done, or I don't Be curious. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think that WordPress is just, it's, oh, it's way too complicated for what I want to be doing right now. Or or maybe you just have overcomplicated tools installed into it, and there might be some really yeah. simple ones that you could use, but you just don't know about them yet. Yeah, well, I think that it's um, – well, I've worked with WordPress heavily before. Um, when I worked with a crazy coupon lady, that's what we use, so I'm very familiar with all of it, but it's just it, – it's so, like, this, this, that you have to click, like, 14 buttons to get into – where stuff is, and then, you know, it's like, well, you would think that um, the way your page set up would, mm. be, would be under the page section, but it's not. It's under the settings, and then the reading setting underneath of that, and that's, you know. Does she call herself Crazy Coupon Lady, or is that just what you refer to her as? Oh, uh, that's the company, thecrazycouponlady.com. It's actually uh-huh. two women, crazy with a K. Oh. Um, but, yeah, and... So I know you said your experiences with her were not the most positive in the world, so I don't know if that's actually what she calls herself or that's oh. <laughs> a question of your opinion. Uh. Yeah, 
uh, no, it, uh, no, that's actually the, the name of the company. Okay. So, um, but yeah, no, she, uh, <laughs> yeah, she was crazy too. Actually, that lady was, uh, dumpster diving for her people. Oh, fun. Well, on the TLC show, they, uh, she the was the one that was learning dumpster channel? diving. Yeah, they had extreme couponing on the TLC channel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, which is full of, you know, what, what's it full of? Uh, oh, what's, I can't even think of it. Polygamy and uh, child molesters and <laughs> <laughs> rapists and... Uh, no, I'm not really all that familiar with the Learning Channel. Um, uh, they're the ones that put on the Duggars and um, they put on Sister Wives and um, my... Uh, I want to say they put on my 600-pound life. Basically, the learning channel functions, focuses on the dysfunction in our society, for the most part. You know, and there's, I think there's a show on there, um, My Big Fat Beautiful Life, and this woman is fat. She's not, like, huge, super, huge obese. I mean, she's obese, but she's not um, bedridden or anything like that. She's, yeah. like, over 300 pounds. That's the one that, like, but... made the YouTube and Facebook reply to that, like, one yes, that, chick, mean that, that, comedian? that comedian chick and this comedian yeah, chick that's exactly. just uh -huh. all insecure and narcissistic and shit. And this lady was just like, wow, really? Yeah, she's like, so um, I don't have a problem with how many cheeseburgers I eat. Why do you have a problem with how many cheeseburgers I eat? You know, yes, and I do love her, but I do think that, um, you know, more per, you know, that that channel perpetuates dysfunction yeah you know i mean i guess there has to be some level of awareness because people love a, a good train wreck yeah. but um you know and that's obviously where we're starting we're exposing each other which is essentially all these reality shows are is exposing people to what real life yeah. is and even though some of it or a lot of it might be scripted you can at least you know, at least it's different from the movies, and it's not so... Um, but also, I've noticed a lot of these reality TV shows are really just there to get people hooked on drama and to, defi to divide people based on petty differences rather than unite them. Exactly. I don't really like reality TV because of that. It's just like, just like I never liked, you know, um, WWF, WWE, whatever it's called, you know, the wrestling. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll watch that all day. Because hey, you know what? No, no, no matter uh, no matter which which one wins or loses, you know Vince McMahon wins every time either way. So it's like you know the corporation is at the top of both sides. So there isn't really a side to pick. No matter which side you pick, it's always the same side. No matter which side you pick, it's just like politics. That's why Jesse Ventura he said um, this is why I was I've been so good at politics because it's just like wrestling. <laughs> right, right. It's exactly what it is. She'll be ugly people. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, oh God, I love wrestling. I set my... Are you familiar with wrestling at all? A little. I don't like it. No, oh, okay. Dang, I thought you'd totally be all about wrestling. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So li li <laughs> no, life is, you know... Uh, 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 life has has enough of those elements in it already, you know. Why do, why do I need to you know scream with this false sense of superiority while my testosterone levels are going through the roof with a bunch of idiots eating each other with chairs and you know. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. Well, not my thing. Know, um. It's just, it's, I just, I think it's hilarious. And, uh, you know, The Rock got me hooked on it when I was, like, 14. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could never, I could never get into it. You know, especially and back, you, especially back then when I was younger, there was more than enough chaos and drama in my own life that I, I didn't need any pretend chaos and drama. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. <clears throat> Yeah, and then a lot, so, a lot of the wrestling fans, too, don't exactly impress me. It's like, you know, all the egotism and narcissism and apathy within a lot of these fans. And I've seen how a lot of these fans go through their day-to-day -day lives with that same attitude, you know, that, that wrestling, uh, wrestling doesn't go away when they turn off the TV. 
you know, they a lot of them they live that mentality, and it's I'm just like, wow, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I definitely get that. I mean, I can see that in my son and my nephew because they just you know they want to do all of that stuff, you know, and then they get this you know macho mentality, and I'm <laughs> like, guys, um, all of that is they're just acting; it's not real. They're just having a lot of fun out there. That's why it's so easy for a lot of them to transition into. Um, into other areas, you know, or into acting and all of that, and because they're still performing. Same with politics. The system is mm-hmm. so weak and it's such a bunch of brainwashed, scripted bullshit. You know, you party politics, and, you know, it's it's just like wrestling. Mm-hmm. You pit the fans against each other, so to speak. And, I mean, Obama especially, it's like, you know, Obama-rama, you know, Obama-Christ superstar, you know, it's just like, you know, it's it's just like politics has become a bigger joke than it ever was. It's like we're looking at these people like celebrities, and, and dare I say we worship them like God in, in many senses. Well, I mean, the Pope is certainly, you know, worshiped like that. I mean, he's like the last, he's the first person to say, knock it all off, you know. He's, he's, so he's, 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 he's probably call us all idiots. He's definitely, shall we say, a lesser evil, but there's a lot of stuff that he says that is totally along the lines of, you know, the agendas of um, the corporate-controlled establishment. Most people well, of course, he's Catholic, right? <laughs> you know, well, most people don't realize that, you know, the Pope is just a, a figure head that's puppeted by the corporations anyway. I mean, why, look at look at how rich they are. Where do you think, where do you think all that wealth came from? It didn't rain from the sky. It's all corporate backed. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. I know, of course. And you know, and now now that you're starting to talk about that, uh, what's really funny is that you know my husband is being more open to all of these things because so much time has passed of, and we've seen. So many things we were told one way, and now it's coming to light that things are not, you know, they they aren't what they seem at the moment. <laughs>